Welcome to AI Business TV here from the AI Summit San Francisco 2019. And we're very pleased to have with us today Ali Miller from AWS. Hi Ali, how are you? I'm fantastic, how are you? Welcome to the AI Summit. Thank you. I first would like to congratulate you on your big win a couple of nights ago at the Iconics Awards. Thank you. Appreciate you were named our first ever AI Innovator of the Year. Um, a massive vote, over 2,500 people cast their vote in, in this category. Um, how does it feel? Ridiculous. Um, you know, I was, I was at the award ceremony surrounded by some of the best folks in AI, best startups, best enterprise, best individuals, and I think my first overwhelming feeling was just awe and honor. Uh, it just felt really nice to be included in that group. And then of course, you know, AI is all about innovation, so being able to think about our future and about the trust and optimism in that future. Uh, just looking at those individuals, you realize we're in good hands. And then I think the last piece that just really sunk in right as I was walking up the stairs was utter gratitude. You kind of realize how many people have taken a chance on you, have said yes when no is so much easier to say. And as you're walking up, you're just like, I, I need to scream the hundred names that I want to thank from the rooftops. So I've been slowly writing thank you emails to everyone who got me where I am today. Yeah, yeah it's been phenomenal across, across social media and even on site at the, at the event. Everybody, yeah, the, the feedback's been, been phenomenal and the, and the kudos. So yeah, congratulations again. Thank you. Um, so talking then about the, the gratitude and things, and things like that and, and kind of looking back at, at kind of your, your, your kind of career and building up to this moment, what first uh, or or who first inspired you to get into tech and, and more specifically AI? I studied cognitive science in college and I think that kind of kick-started my love of human thinking and how do we as humans think through decisions, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, and I've always had that lens of the world. Uh, I studied cognitive science, which was computer science, psychology, linguistics, and it is a really nice technical and non-technical lead into AI. I ended up really wanting to get into tech and AI because of the impact. I think one thing that strikes me so much about AI and machine learning is, you know, on the one hand, it's incredibly technical. And then you've got this other side, which is immensely humanistic. And I think people who have this combination of left brain, right brain, really succeed in AI and I've been able to leverage my computer science background, along with this relationship building and UX and design and marketing, to be able to combine and say, what is the future of AI? Where are we going and how can we make it best? Wonderful, and you know, you're know you one of the most recognizable figures within AI today, um, a, a, a woman leader in tech and in, in AI. How are you seeing the conversation evolve around kind of gender equality and uh, women in tech in general? Um, how do you see the landscape today? What, what more can be done really for, for, for both in terms of like the big tech companies and yeah. enterprises to drive um, kind of like, w like women getting more involved um, in tech and disruptive technologies today? First of all, thank you for asking that. Incredibly important. There are kind of two parts of diversity and inclusion that I see. And on the one side you've got education and empowerment. And on the other side, it's opportunity and inclusion. So on that education and empowerment side, this is something I focus on every day, in and out of Amazon. I was named an ambassador for Advancing Women in Product, which is an organization of over 10,000 women in technical roles. I was recently named an ambassador for the American Association for the Advancement of Science, where they named 125 women in STEM as pioneers across the country to be role models, to be visible, to inspire young girls in middle school to get involved in STEM. And so that is really what I do on, on that kind of first side, that, that education, empowerment, getting young women involved, being that visible role model. Because if you can't see a woman doing that, why would you believe that you sure. could? And it's a, that's a horrible fact, but it's something we have to think about and talk about. The other side is, is opportunity and inclusion. And from my view, that is a critical conversation to have everyone involved. When you only have the underrepresented group talking about inclusion, you can only go so far. And it becomes a conversation of men and women, of young and less young and LGBT and everyone. 
to say, how are we going to advance this and what opportunities are we going to create? And so at Amazon, you know, we learn and innovate all the time on technology and it's no different as it relates to diversity and inclusion. And I'm lucky enough to not only be a woman leader, but to look around at some of our business lines seeing women leading. So we've got Tony Reed, who runs Alexa Experiences, Teresa Carlson, who runs Worldwide Public Sector, Sandy Carter, who was another nominee for AI sure, in the yes. end of the year. And it's so inspiring to be able to look around and see people like me, knowing that we can inspire the next thousands and millions of folks like us to rise up and become women in tech. So for the next generation of AI leaders then, what would you say to them? You know, one thing that I really stand for and ruthlessly talk about every day is this idea that change and innovation can come from anywhere. And as I mentioned, like machine learning is so, so technical, but it has this, this you know, softer side, this humanistic side. And so while machine learning needs machine learning engineers, data scientists, PhDs, we just as much need designers, marketers, finance, legal, men, women, LGBT, everyone involved. AI needs everyone. And I wish that everyone would feel inspired to say, I'm interested in that space, I can do it, and I'm going to do it. Great, well, well let's talk about what's next then. Um, there's a, a lot of kind of predictions around how AI is gonna, gonna shape up in the next year to two years. Where do you see the, the use cases lying? Kind of where do you see the investment um, being placed? Uh, what are we going to see as a community in the next year or two? It's always the question, like what, what is the future of AI? When are, when are we going to see you know, the, the next big thing? When are self-driving cars coming? Um, when I look at AI and the advancements in machine learning and deep learning, there's kind of four themes that really pop out. And year after year, you can kind of see what ticks we've been able to make in these four. So those four categories, or flexibility, customizability, performance, and accessibility. So on that flexibility side, we're seeing a lot of edge computing, and that's inspiring a lot of uh, new innovation in IoT and robotics, being able to have the device itself do the AI, do the machine learning, and inferencing on the edge. In the phrase, uh, in the world of customizability, what we're seeing is businesses that might not even have machine learning capabilities in-house are suddenly able to leverage their own data to build these hyper-customized machine learning models that are able to perform at much higher accuracy because it's trained on their own data. And so that customizability is being able to train on less data, it's being able to do it in multiple systems, personalization engines, natural language processing, computer vision, and it's amazing to be able to see now what startups and enterprise clients are able to do on their own. On performance, I mean, it's unreal what we're seeing in the world of natural language processing from GPT-2. It is incredible to read white papers coming out daily and to look at NeurIPS and see what innovators are doing and that's something that you know every week I try and read at least one white paper in machine learning. And the last, which is what is most near and dear to my heart, is accessibility. And I think within that, this kind of ties back to our other topic of inclusion, which is Machine learning is so highly technical, but how can we empower even more people, even more users, designers, marketers, salespeople, to be able to leverage machine learning in their businesses and be able to say AI is for all, AI is for everyone. How can you bring that value into your business and be able to drive real change, maybe without that machine learning expertise? Fantastic, so a lot to look forward to and a lot on the horizon. Yes. Ali, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your AI Summit. Thank you, appreciate Cheers. it.